Hey girls, in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about the training aspect of things. So we're gonna be talking about technique, training intensity, training intensifiers, rest periods, as well as cardio. Now, this is gonna be really, really important for you to understand because understanding this part is gonna be a major impact in terms of your results, all right? So the first part that we need to talk about is our technique. Now, our technique is really, really important because the certain exercises that I prescribe for you in your program is gonna be targeting certain muscle groups for a certain reason. Now, an example would be if we're doing a Romanian deadlift and trying to work on the back of our legs, legs with this movement, we're gonna be going, our hips are gonna come back, we're gonna get a stretch in the back of our legs, we're gonna squeeze our bum, so it's a back of the legs and bum movement. But if we have the technique wrong and we're just bending over, we're not gonna be using the back of our legs and our bum, we're gonna be using a lot of our back. So what the benefits for that exercise is gonna be for, we're not actually using it. So we're not gonna be getting what we're actually wanting to achieve out of this program. So it's really important that the exercises that you're performing, you're doing with good technique. Now, you're gonna find in your program that I've broken down every single exercise with a coaching video. These are all just under a minute long, so it's really simple for you to understand of what you need to look for or how you need to perform the exercise. If you know what the exercise is, is already, I still recommend you just watching that so you get an understanding. There might be some internal things that uh, I may need you to focus on so then you're getting the most benefits out of that exercise. So it's really, really important to actually um, watch them even as a refresher too. So nice and simple and it will help you get the best out of your program. Now the next part that I wanna to talk to you about is our training intensity. Now this is a huge one. Now, if you are just training, like, and it happens a lot, and it may happen with you as well, but if you're just training, you think you're training hard, but you're not seeing the results that you're after, this could be a huge reason as to why you're not getting the results that you're after. Now, in terms of trying to ma maximize and get the benefits of trying to build that muscle, which is the shape and the tone that you're after, we need to make sure that we're training in a certain rep range. Now, to get the most out of that training, we need to stay within five reps away from hitting a muscular failure. So by at the end of the set, if we were to reach complete failure, we need to finish within those five reps around there because they're gonna be the most important reps of your set. And that's where you're gonna get a lot of benefits from that. So what you're gonna find is that we have a scale and that determines how challenging that that set of that exercise should be. So what we call it is called the RPE, and that stands for Rated Perceived Exertion. So you may see an exercise and it'll say Dumbbell Romanian Deadlift, and it says three sets of 12 at an RPE of eight, right? So we have this RPE scale. Now, that's for you to determine how challenging that this weight needs to be. An RPE of six means you have four reps away from muscular failure. An RP of seven means you have three reps away from muscular failure. An RP of eight means you have two more reps away from muscular failure. An RP of nine means you have one rep away from muscular failure. An RP of 10 means you fail on that last rep of what I've set for you, okay? So majority of the weights of the, the RPE that I'm gonna set for you is gonna fall between the RP of seven, it will progress into an RP of eight, and then it'll go towards the RP of nine. So we're always looking at trying to keep progressing our training and lifting at a higher intensity over time. Then it may come back down and we may increase it again. So very important that you understand this. Now, if it's three sets of 12 at an RP of eight, which is here, we have two reps away from failure. So if we're doing 12 reps, you should be choosing a weight that you feel like when you get to 12, you might be like, I could probably get probably about two reps and that's it. Then I would fail. Then you know you've hit a perfect RP of eight. Now, the following week you come and do that again, you do the same weight and you're like, you know what? I feel a bit stronger now. I could probably get about another three or four. Well then, that's not an RP of eight anymore. That could be an RP of six or a seven. So when you feel like that, that's when you wanna try and increase the weight and go a little bit heavier with that. Okay, so the best bang for your buck is for us to be training in this RP of seven, eight, and nine. Very, very important for you to understand this. So please make sure that you're lifting towards this and you're gonna find in your Google Sheets you have an empty column for you to write the weight of what you're lifting with. Very important that you do that because then the following week come, 
comes by and you know what weight that you lifted for that RPE. Without you guessing, because at the start it's going to be a lot about guessing just to see, you know, is that really hitting that certain RPE? If not, then I need to look at increasing. So, you know, it's all about finding the, the common ground there with the weight. Um, and so you're writing it down. So then you're going to keep getting better and better as each week comes. Now, this is why people get a lot of good results by building muscle is because of this. So it's not about, you know, you might find someone on Instagram and like a, a, this little Instagram workout. That's not going to get the results that you're after by chopping and changing and doing that different weeks, right? What we need to do is do the same workout and keep progressing over time, getting stronger at that. We may start an RP7 on that exercise. Over the weeks as carry on, we might do an RP of eight, and then we will progress into an RP of nine. That's how we build the muscle, and that's how we keep progressing and getting the results that we're after, okay? By doing the basic stuff and getting stronger and getting better at them, lifting more reps over time. That's how we get the best results. Now we go into rest pause method. Now this is an intensifier and you're gonna to start to see this in your programs as well. Now an example here that I've given you is a two sets of 15 with a rest pause method on the last set times three. Now what that means is here, so we're gonna do set one of 15 reps like normal. On the last set, set two, we're gonna go 15 reps like normal, but then we're gonna rest for a strict 15 seconds. We're gonna pick the weight up and then we're gonna to go to RPE of nine for our first rest pause method set. RPE of nine means we have one more rep to failure. Then we're gonna rest for a strict 15 seconds again, pick the weight up, and then we're gonna do our second rest pause set to RPE of nine again, so one rep away from failure. We're gonna rest for 15 seconds strictly, and then go again to an RPE of nine, which is one rep away from failure. So an example would look like in terms of how many reps because this is gonna be determined on you, but you know, roughly it would be, okay, 15 reps. Then the first one may be about 12. The second one may be about eight or nine. Then the third one, because you're so fatigued, might be about six or seven, okay? So that is all with the same weight that you're lifting and you're gonna find it gets harder as you carry on. On your Google Sheets, I want you to write down the weight, the weight and the reps that you're doing. So an example would be, here in the, in the empty column, so it'll be 15 slash 12 slash 8 slash 7. Then the following week, you're gonna try and increase those numbers and try and beat them all by one rep. If you can't, that's fine, but we wanna try and make sure that we're hitting this RPE of nine. It's gonna be really, really important for you to understand that one. Now, the, the other part here is a drop set method. A little bit different to the rest pause. Now, an example would be three sets of 12 with the drop set on the last set times two. So what that would look like is set one, like normal, 12 reps. Set two, like normal, 12 reps. Now set three is the last set and where we're gonna perform our drop set. So we're gonna do 12 reps like normal. We're gonna immediately drop the weight and go a little bit lighter by about 5% and go straight into another 12 reps as the first drop set. Then we're gonna drop the weight, immediately pick something up that's a little bit lighter and go again for the second drop set for another 12 reps, okay? So that's how a drop set would work. Whatever the set that I've pre prescribed you here, you're still gonna have the same amount of reps of, if I've given it 12, you're on your drop sets, you're still gonna go for 12, okay? If I've done three sets of 15 with two drop sets here times two, it's gonna be 15, and then we're gonna do two drop sets to 15 again, and then 15 again, okay? Now, uh, we're gonna talk about a little bit about the rest part. Now, you're gonna see on your program as well, I'm gonna give you your prescribed rest periods. Now, you can also take as long as you necessarily need, all right? So, I may give you, let's say, one minute rest, but you feel so fatigued that when you go to do that next set of something, it may feel really hard, and you'll not be able to perform as great as you could on the first set, or you might feel like really fatigued and your technique isn't good anymore. Well then that's when I want you to rec rec realize that, be aware of that and take a little bit longer rest so then you can perform at the same rate as you did on f the first set. Because if we're doing that, then we're gonna get stronger. If we're getting stronger, it's gonna help with our performance and build more muscle, which is gonna help with in terms of our goal. So don't think that I need to have a short rest, get my heart rate up and just, you know, cause I wanna burn more calories because that's not gonna be the answer. That's not gonna help you get the maximum results in the gym. We need to slow down and recover 
and I need you to be, um, you know, get comfortable with recovering. So then we're performing and continuously progressing our training. So take as long as you necessarily need. I've just given you some rough guidelines. And then a little hack for you in your rest periods is to walk in the gym in between your sets. By doing this, it just helps increase your step tracker each day, that I, I, your targets each day, which increases your need, which is helping us burn more calories throughout the day. All right? Now, the last part is the cardio. Now, you're gonna see it is used only when needed. Now, cardio, there is no magic to cardio. Absolutely not. Cardio is just a tool just to burn more calories, that's it. It doesn't mean you're gonna lose body fat. It doesn't mean that. Even if you're doing high intensity training, it's not losing body fat. All it's doing is it's burning a little bit more energy. Now, if we're not in a calorie deficit that we spoke about at the start, it's not gonna help us burn body fat, all right? So, what I mean by this is, if we are tracking our calories, we are doing our steps. Now, for the example that I did earlier in the videos, if we were burning 2,000 calories in a day, and then we were moving around, and we were doing and burning 1,500 calories, that's a 500 calorie deficit. So because of that, we're gonna be helping us, it's gonna be helping us burn more body fat, which means that we wouldn't need to burn more cardio, all right? So we will only use this when we need, and there are, might be other ways that we might go, okay, well, now things are starting to slow down, we may drop your calories a little bit more to continue burning more body fat, or we may, increase our steps to continue move, burning more body fat. Or we may keep it the same and just go, you know what, let's add in a little bit of cardio now to continue burning more calories. So it is only a tool when we necessarily need it. We don't want to use it at the start. We'll only use that as a tool when it's all needed. So I hope that gives you a better understanding in terms of all the training aspects of things because uh, it's really, really important. If you are unsure of anything, then please re-watch this video, get a better understanding, and uh, if you have any questions, then make sure you're putting it through to the Facebook group.